what's up everybody welcome to my channel in this video today i will be sharing with you step by step how you can configure auditing for your aws rds instance now this video was taken from my course on udemy mastering sql server on aws rds so just one favor before we get started can you hit the subscribe button and help me grow to a thousand subscribers so with that said let's get right into it Auditing on a SQL Server instance is an important task that helps guide the focus of server administration and can point out areas that need to be improved, or simply monitoring activity for compliance with government or industry policies. At the core, an audit simply logs events that are happening at the instance level or in the database and saves them to an audit file. This can be retrieved later or after the fact. In order to get started with SQL Server Audit, we need to create a server audit. This is the main container object that will hold components and assemble the final audit documents in a location called audit destination. This is where SQL Server will store the audit data once enabled. It can be written to the disk, directly to Windows event log, or the application event log, or the Windows application event log. Once SQL Server audit is created, you will need to decide what specifically you want to track. This is accomplished either through server audit specification for server level events or database audit specification for database level events. Multiple audits can be created per server instance, but only one database audit specification can be created for each database on the instance. These specifications will define what events will be recorded by the audit. When creating a specification, you can decide to record events that are related together in pre-configured audit action groups, such as the backup restore group, which will log any backup or restored activity performed on the instance, or even the database permission change group. This will be triggered anytime there is a grant, deny, or revoke statement issued by any user. Granular control is achieved by auditing specific events individually, such as when any select statement or execute statement is issued. There is a listing and description of all the server level actions and database level audit actions groups available on Microsoft documentation page. All editions of SQL Server support server level audits. Prior to SQL Server 2016, database level auditing was limited to enterprise, developer and evaluation editions. The developer edition is similar to the enterprise edition. In the next lecture, we'll be taking a look at how to configure SQL Server audit. So guys, in this module, you'll be learning how to audit your SQL Server instance. So in order to achieve this, we need to do a couple of things. First, we need to create a S3 bucket that will act as a storage location once the audit files are shipped from the database instance. They will be stored in the S3 bucket. And then we need to add the SQL Server Audit Option group to our database. So the first thing we're going to do now is that we're going to be creating the S3 bucket. From the search box, you can search for S3. In my recently visited section, I have the S3 option. Select Create Bucket. Specify a name for your bucket. I will be calling this SQL-Audit. Ensure that you are creating the S3 bucket within the same region as your database instance. So I'm working in US East 2, Ohio. For the object ownership, keep the default as ACL disabled. So for now, we are going to ensure that we block all public access. And we are going to disable bucket versioning. So what the bucket versioning does is that it keeps multiple variants of an object in the same bucket. So for tags, it is optional. However, I'm going to add a tag called SQL Audit. For bucket key, we're keeping the default. So the next step is to select Create Bucket. So the next step is to allow our RDS database to be able to access the S3 bucket, right? So to do this, select your bucket and copy the ARN. This stands for Amazon Resource Name. So if you look carefully under the access option, you'll see that I have two other buckets and the access option says only authorized users of this account. So select the SQL bucket, select permissions, then edit public access and disable all public access and then save changes. Type confirm and then select confirm to confirm the changes. For the bucket policy, edit 
and then select policy generator that will assist you in generating a bucket policy select the policy type so from the drop down select sg bucket policy for effect we're going to allow all for now so the asterisk means all and for aws service we're going to select all so from the actions option you will select the actions that can be performed on the bucket so to ensure everything works fine we're going to be selecting all actions for the amazon resource name we're going to paste in the resource name we copied earlier scroll down once you click anywhere on the screen you will see the option that says add statement then select generate policy so copy this policy that was generated now head over back to the s3 bucket and for the bucket policy select add new statement then paste the statement that you previously generated then select save changes edit public access again now select block all public access and save changes type confirm select confirm now let's go back to all the buckets so select buckets and you'll see that the access is now only authorized users of this account so the next step is to head over to your rds dashboard so i'm going to search rds then select rds on the options group select the option group that you created in the option groups lecture then select add option from the drop down list select sql server audit for the audit destination expand and select the bucket that you just created scroll down to im role what this does is that it will grant right access to the s3 bucket so expand and select create a new role you could also create this role from the iam console specify a role name i'm going to call this sql audit role expand additional configuration here you can enable compression or retention so if you enable retention it will keep the log files on the database for the specified time and the log files will be moved to another folder you will see this when we are querying the audit log so i'm not going to enable this option for scheduling we are going to apply immediately then select add option so the sql audit option has been successfully added to the sql 2019 option group so what we need to do now is that we need to attach this option group to the database instance so this will make the necessary configuration on the database for us to enable auditing if this option group is not enabled you won't be able to configure auditing on your database so select databases select your database and then select modify scroll down to configuration for the option group select sql 2019 or the name of the option group that you created then scroll down select continue and apply immediately then select modify database instance so what we're going to do now is that we're going to check if the option group is applied successfully right before we can start the configuration so select the database identifier select configuration and scroll down and once the sql 2019 option group is staying in sync just like the sql program here then you can proceed to configure your audit the option group is now in sync so you can head over to management studio so the first step is to create an audit so we need to expand security right click on audits select new audit and then specify a name for the audit so i'm going to keep the default name for now so the queue delay specifies the amount of time in milliseconds that can elapse before audit actions are forced to be processed a value of zero indicates synchronous delivery so we're going to keep the default of a thousand on audit log failure we can choose to continue fail the operation or shut down the server so we're going to keep the default as continue for the audit destination you have three options you have the file option security log and application log However, for RDS database instances you cannot use the security log or the application log you have to specify the default path provided by RDS, which is d colon slash RDS DB data slash SQL audit. For the audit file maximum limit, this parameter should not be changed. For the maximum file size, it has to be between 2 megabytes and 50 megabytes. So specify 2 megabytes. Once the file size is reached, then RDS will push that file to the S3 bucket. 
So it will move it from the SQL audit location to the S3 storage location. Then select OK. Expand audits and you'll see the default audits provided by Amazon RDS. These you can't make modifications to them. So let me open the sample script that was used to create the audit. So in order for us to audit the server events and activities, we now need to create a server audit specification. To create a server audit specification, right click server audit specification, new server audit specification, expand the window and specify a name for your audit specification. So I'm going to rename this to SQL Server Audit. And from the drop down, select the audit. Then for your audit action type, select whichever audit action you want to audit. So you can select Fail Login Group and Successful Login Group. Once you have selected your audit action type, select OK. Now let's refresh Server Audit Specification and we can see the SQL Server Audit. By default, it is disabled, so we need to enable it. So right click on the audit and then enable audit specification. Then select close. Now let's refresh and the SQL Server Audit is enabled. So to view the server audits, we can use the RDS function get audit file. So let's execute this query and we should see a list of events that was logged in the server audit file. So now let's simulate a fail login. So connect to your instance, select database engine and I'm going to put a random username and a random password. Now let's select connect. I'm just going to do this one more time and select OK then cancel. This may take a short while before it's written to the log. So let's execute the query. So if we scroll down in the log, we're looking for a log ID of login F, LGIF. So here we have one LGIF, which is login failure. So let's scroll across and we'll see that this random username that I use was trying to log into the database. You could also use a where clause to filter the query. So you could say where statement like fail. And this should return all the result in the log that as a failure. So the result is now just showing what failed and you'll get a detailed overview of all the information such as the login statement, the instance where it came from, right? The audit file name which the data is stored, the application name which is management studio and even the host name. If you had enabled log retention, the log files would be shipped on another location on the server. So therefore, you need to make a small modification to your query. So it would be moved to the transmitted folder, right? And then you can execute your query just the same to view the log files. Once the retention period is up, then those logs will be uploaded to the S3 bucket. So now that you know how to audit events at your instance level, it's now time to learn how to audit your database. To enable audit on a specific database, expand databases, then expand the database which you want to enable audit for. Then expand security. Right click on database audit specifications. Then select new database audit specification. Let's expand this window. And for the audit action type, we're going to be auditing selects. So whenever a user executes a select statement on the database, then it will be audited. So for the audit action type, select select. For the object class, you have three options. You have the database, object, and the schema. Select database for the object name, browse, and then we're going to be selecting the AdventureWorks database. Then select OK. Then select OK again. When creating a database audit specification, RDS recommends that you use the RDS underscore das underscore db naming convention. So I'm going to change this name here and then specify the db name. So I'm going to call this adventure. And then from the audit, select the audit from the drop down list. And for the before we can select OK, we need to select the principal that needs to be audited. So select browse. I'm going to select the admin user. Then select OK. Then select OK again. 
Select OK to create the database audit specification. Refresh the database audit specification and then enable the database audit specification because by default it's disabled. In order to generate the script that was used to create the database audit specification, right click on the database, select script database audit specification as and then select create and I'm going to select copy to clipboard and then I'll be pasting it right here. So now we can go ahead and execute a select statement on any of the table within the AdventureWorks database. So we'll select asterisk from and the table. Now let's execute the statement. Now we need to query the audit file. So instead of using like failed, we're going to use like select. Now let's execute the statement and we should see all the actions carried out by the admin user. So if we scroll across, in the select statement, we should see the operations that were carried out. So if we scroll down, we'll see the select statement that was done by the admin. So auditing your SQL Server database is a great way to track anomalies and keep up with corporate compliance.